Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRayMaker.com, and today I've got a quick tips video around Whoop's new Apple Health integration to their platform. Now this is something they launched in beta about a week ago now, uh, and there's no like way to get into the beta other than just simply popping up in your app. Uh, in my case, it popped up last Wednesday, a bunch of other people as well. And what this does, this will pull data from Apple Health into the Whoop platform. Uh, now the idea here being that you can record workouts on something like a watch or a bike computer, anything you want, and then from there it gets transferred into the Whoop platform uh, and then allows you to get better accuracy of the start and ending times of your workouts as well as the classifications of your workouts. It'll also update things like GPS as well as your weight and, and more. But there's some caveats and catches to this. And so after using it for about a week now, I've got most of these things kind of figured out. So I figured I'd just quickly run you through them. The very first one, of course, is getting into the beta. It'll pop up a message just like this. Uh, you gotta click accept to that, uh, and then you have to connect it to Apple Health. That's pretty much a standard issue connecting to Apple Health bits. Uh, you go ahead and you accept a bunch of things, and then once it's done, it'll show you this screen here. Looks identical to the first screen, except at the very bottom, that connect button is gone, which means you've done it successfully. Once that's done, you may get a whole crap ton of notifications, like this right here, uh, that shows you that it's pulling in all these workouts and stuff like that. Just ignore that for now, it's doing this thing in the background. Uh, the most important thing though is then ensuring that the device or app that you're using to push workouts to Apple Health is already connected. So that works for virtually every app platform out there, uh, except for Fitbit. Fitbit's like the only major one that does not push their workouts, uh, except for Whoop, I guess, uh, to Apple Health. Uh, so if you have a Garmin or a Wahoo device or anything else, even Strava, in fact, can write workouts to Apple Health. Uh, that's useful if you do have something like Fitbit, which does not go directly to Apple Health, you can write it to Strava and then Strava to Apple Health. Now, in general, you won't have to worry about duplicates. It takes care of that for you. Uh, but if you do get duplicates, there's a bunch of steps they have in like their FAQ article that I'll link down below to there uh, on how to kind of sort and troubleshoot that kind of stuff. But I have not seen any duplicates in my experience and I'm one that recorded things on like five of these devices at once for testing purposes. So if I'm not seeing them, you're probably not gonna see them either. It's, it's just my guess there. Now, if you wanna validate that workouts are being properly pushed into Apple Health from your devices, the easiest way is open up the Health app, just simply called Health on your iPhone, uh, and then go into the Browse button, the bottom right-hand side there, and then into Activity, and then scroll down until you see workouts. Uh, so you should see it right there, uh, workouts. Mine is just the most recent one there. Uh, and then once you're on that page, scroll down again all the way until you see either show all data or show data and sources. The quickest way is clicking show all data, uh, and then you'll see all your most recent workouts that are written uh, from those platforms to Apple Health. Uh, if you're not seeing anything there, then the next thing you want to go is go back one step, and data sources and access, and then scroll down into the data sources, that's the things writing to Apple Health, uh, and then double check that your app is listed somewhere in there. If that's not the case, then go into your app and troubleshoot and figure things out. The one other thing to keep in mind is that a lot of apps don't write stuff until the apps reopen. Uh, so if we look back here, you'll see show all data. It's missing Wahoo workouts, these ones right here from the last few days. So I need to go reopen the Wahoo app, maybe close it and then reopen it, then I'll write it to it. Things aren't necessarily perfect in this world, but it usually kind of works out once you reopen apps. And hey, a quick note before I forget, if you find this video interesting and useful, just whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe. Uh, it really does help out this video and the channel quite a bit. Okay, with all that stuff set up, then it's time to do your workout. Now remember, the point of this feature is basically auto recognition of activities that may be hard for Whoop to recognize by itself. So in my case, I mostly do swimming and cycling and running. Uh, and in that realm, my heart rate gets up pretty high pretty quickly. So Whoop's automatic recognition of activities is actually really darn good. I've had almost no problems with that. Uh, so the easiest way for me to demonstrate this is actually to go out for a very low heart rate activity. Uh, so in this case, I'm going on my electric cargo bike. I'm just pedaling a loop uh, around the, the block, if you will, well, around the park uh, for 15 minutes. Uh, and I'm recording it purely on my Garmin watch. Uh, now the reason I'm doing that is because my heart rate is going to be super low. You see here like 70 to 80 beats per minute. So Whoop's own algorithms don't detect that. They never detect those kind of rides for me for the most part. So in that case, it's a great example of showing how this all works. Once I was done with that ride, I simply stopped the workout on my Garmin. Uh, and then a couple seconds later, you can see it in Garmin Connect there. Uh, but you'll notice that Whoop over here is not yet synced fully to 1.08 p.m., the same time stamp shown in this screenshot. Uh, so you got to wait for that to happen to get caught up there. And then I waited and I waited and I waited and nothing really happened. So then you do what you always do with technology, you restart it. And so I restarted the Garmin Connect app and then I restarted the Whoop app and then boom, the workout showed up. Uh, and that's kind of the pattern I've seen. If you wait long enough, eventually it converges and like long enough being like an hour or so in most cases. But uh, if you want things to happen instantly, just restart the apps and then it tends to happen instantly. 
And now you see here in this case over in Whoop land uh, that I now have this workout there. It's, you know, 14 minutes, nothing exciting, super low strain as you expect. But the point is it exists. Um, it's something that automatically happened because I created the workout here. This workout would have never been created uh, by itself because my heart rate is too low. And that's useful, again, if you're in like a strength training scenario or perhaps trying to categorize walks or anything else where the heart rate may not spike immediately. It may be kind of low for a while uh, and Whoop may not automatically classify the beginnings and endings of those particular workouts correctly. Now, one of the things you're probably noticing though is that the heart rates are not the same. So here on this side is the Garmin, here on this side is Whoop. Uh, and notice the max heart rates. Uh, in the case of Whoop, it's 105, 106, uh, 105 beats per minute. In the case of Garmin, it's 90 something or so. And that's because Whoop does not import the heart rate data. And I've asked them about this and they said, nope, they're not doing that. You have to have the Whoop band on for the heart rate data to come from Whoop uh, and not from any other devices, which is definitely a bummer because that would solve one of the things that people have complained about, including myself, the heart rate data can be inaccurate uh, in the Whoop platform. So just be aware of that, that you still have to wear this. Uh, and to demonstrate that, here is a ride day last week, a trainer ride uh, where I was indoors, super high intensity, uh, but I put the Whoop band on the desk in front of me there and then did the workout and recorded that purely on the these devices here. Uh, and indeed, those devices pushed the workout, it created that workout file in Whoop, but there was no strain there, and then there was no heart rate with that. And so obviously you need the heart rate data for the strain so it doesn't pull that stuff in. Now, the other thing it's supposed to do at this point in the beta is to either show the GPS data or show the distance in the same way that using the strain coach feature in the app would work. In my experience over the past week, I have not seen that though for any workouts coming from either Garmin or Wahoo devices. Uh, and I know those workouts are populating that data correctly in Apple Health. I can look at that and validate that. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but hopefully that's just a beta bug to be sorted out. But that would be cool to be able to see that uh, GPS data in the Whoop app itself, as well as the distance data shown there. The other thing I'm not seeing happen is updating of the profile data. Uh, Whoop says right now you should be able to update your height, weight, and uh, date of birth. Now, obviously my date of birth isn't gonna change and my height's probably not gonna change either, uh, but my weight would change. And there's certainly like Wi-Fi scales, like Garmin's Wi-Fi scales and other scales that write to Apple Health. Uh, but when I tried that, nothing updated in the Whoop app either, even after like a bunch of restarts and stuff. So that may also be a bug. Again, this is all kind of beta at this point. Uh, which then gets to the last question is, when will be expanded? So the first bit is when will be expanded to other people? And Whoop says over the coming months, they'll get it to all iOS users. And then they say that coming in a few months, they'll start on the Android side doing the exact same thing with Google Health. Uh, so I confirmed those two pieces with them. And then I asked them, I said, okay, so what about the other direction? What about going from the Whoop band into Apple Health, like being a good neighbor, right? That whole concept of you know data portability and all that kind of stuff. And they said, that's coming too. And I think their exact quote was, members can look forward to more functionality in the future, like data going from Whoop to Apple Health Kit. Uh, so there we go, that's gonna happen, but there's no timeframes on that line item, unlike the other ones. Uh, and keep in mind, Whoop did promise this last summer, they promised the ability to export data out of the platform. Uh, and that's still not here today, at least like in a, in a siloed way. You can export, of course, to Strava and uh, Training Peaks, I think as well, but uh, you can't, you know, individually just take a file out of Whoop today. Uh, so hopefully that'll come as well uh, as part of this whole thing. So with that, there you go, kind of today's like explainer, if you will, on how this integration actually works in real life. Uh, I think it's a good first step, but it's really just a first step. Like all those other pieces need to be there uh, for this to be truly useful. And then of course, beyond that, the bigger ticket item would be able to nullify bad data. Uh, so in my case, I get bad data all the time. Just in the last week alone, I've had two huge fake workouts where it thought I was doing something for an extended period of time, like 45 minutes, and I wasn't doing that thing at all. I was doing, in fact, nothing. Uh, and it created this you know, workout 170, 180 beats per minute uh, that doesn't exist. Uh, and you can't remove that from a strain standpoint. So from like a training load standpoint, that's just there on your day, which impacts all sorts of other things uh, versus you need some way to nullify that to zero that out and say, no, that's that's bad. I want to delete this uh, and just put like a average resting heart rate there for that time period. Uh, and you can't do that today. Uh, anyways, all this stuff is cool. Also, I realized I've never done a video YouTube review of the Whoop band. I have my written review if you want to see that down below there. I know I need to do this. I've been wearing it uh, actually more than two years now between the 3.0 and the 4.0 and the 4.0 since back in October or something like that. So I definitely need to get that out the door as well. Anyways, hope you found this interesting and useful. If so, go ahead and like that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe for plenty more sports technology goodness. With that, have a good one.